Uh, so it is my deep pleasure to welcome you all here on behalf of Sweetwater Organics and uh, to uh, introduce you to Sylvia Bernstein. This topic, uh, as Matt and I were just talking, oh my god, this is, I got the fun topic today. So um, I'm really excited about being able to talk about this with you all today. Um, let me see if I can get my, there we go. So I just wanted to just tell you just a little bit more about who I am and sort of why it is that I happen to be standing up here. Um, my background is that I, I went to the University of California at Davis and studied agricultural economics. Uh, at the time, I did it because I wanted a business degree. I had no interest in agriculture whatsoever. I didn't want to be around dirt. I didn't want to be around plants. I didn't want to be around bugs. I did it so that I could go out and work in the corporate business world. And that was UC Davis's version of the business major. I had a minor degree in English. After that, I went on and worked for Anderson Consulting in, in computer systems design. I went and got my MBA at the University of Chicago in um, international finance, and I haven't used a stitch of it since. So after I got my MBA, I went and I got married to my husband, who I worked for when I was in uh, graduate school. That's a whole other crazy story. <laughs> So we got married, he was a partner at McKinsey and Company. He traveled four to five days a week. And the first 10 years of our marriage, I stayed home with the kids and gardened a lot. I suddenly discovered what it was to grow plants and the joy of growing plants. And, and frankly, as a stay-at-home mom, I called it my sanity. Now I knew that it was getting to be obsessive when my husband gave me a floodlight for Christmas so that I could garden during the night. Um, so I think this, this really needed to be focused. And in um, 2001, during the, the tech crash, he was working for a tech company in San Jose. His company went under, he was 49 years old, and he said, you know what, we've got enough money, I'm gonna retire. And so he retired. And now all of a sudden, the two of us were at home all the time. So it was time for me to go back to work. <laughs> and at that point, I, I dipped my toe back into the water by working for a, a company called The Pampered Chef. I did uh, kitchen demonstrations. It was a ton of fun. It was a great skill builder. Got me in front of groups of people trying to speak and cook at the same time. I did 110 cooking shows in one year and got bored. This is not what I want to be doing long term, but it was really a great way to get back in. While I was working for Pampered Chef, I saw a little tiny classified ad in our local paper for a company called Aerogro. And Aerogro was just, um, just forming, and they were looking for somebody to run their plant laboratory. <laughs> well, I have it agricultural economics degree, right? I garden with a floodlight, so I ought to be able to run a plant laboratory. So somehow I convinced them of that. Uh, they hired me 10 hours a week to start with. Um, by the time I'd been working there for three months, I was working 50 hours a week. I was part of the original founding team at Aerogro. Has anyone ever seen an Aero garden before? You guys, okay. That's the product that we designed, and I, I was part of the design team there. My specific role was around plants and plant technology, uh, running, establishing the grow lab, establishing the nursery, and doing all the, the work that we did around um, pH buffering, around nutrient tablets. Our goal, our, our mission with AeroGrow was to take hydroponic gardening and make it easy and understandable and successful for anybody, anywhere, anytime to be able to grow plants inside of their house. So that was our mission. So, worked at Aero Row for 
almost seven years, I ended up becoming the uh, vice president of product development. Then we fired the head of marketing, so I took that on too, and I was the vice president of marketing and product development. I left Arrow Grow in October of 2009, mainly because I had discovered aquaponics. So as, as uh, Jim was saying, <laughs> it's, it's for those of you that are just getting into aquaponics, it really can be addictive and, and change your life in many ways. The reason why I discovered aquaponics was because as the, the plant person at Aerobrow, um, we were constantly working on trying to find an organic hydroponic nutrient. We had a couple that worked. They, um, they were difficult to keep stable. They were very, very expensive, and we were never able to get to what we consider a holy grail, which was an organic secret. So I was paying a lot of attention to that space and what was going on in the organic nutrient world in hydroponics. And I heard about this thing called aquaponics in you know, 2004, 2005, some of the trade publications were starting to talk about aquaponics. But honestly, I thought it was sort of a fringe, you know, funky dunky organic thing going on. It couldn't really work. And a friend of mine at Yarrow Brow, who's a real team worker, decided to set up an aquaponic system in his basement. He said, you know, this is just too cool to pass up, and if it doesn't work, oh well. So he set it up and he said, you know, you're not gonna believe this, but it really works. And I said, yeah, right. So this, this went on for three or four months, right? You gotta come see this. <laughs> so finally, one day, it was, it was a really rainy Saturday. My husband was out of town, and I was just there with my 14-year-old son, and we were looking for something to do. I said, you know, John just got chickens, right? He had baby chicks also in his basement. So I said, okay, now, now we gotta go see it. You know, add the chicks to the mix, I'm gonna go see it. So we headed on down there, and I'll be damned if he didn't have a jungle happening in his basement. And I was hooked. We drive home, my son and I planned our system. So a total disaster, we did everything wrong. But we were growing up chronically, and six months later, I quit my job and started this business. Now, our business in um, aquaponics is totally focused on the home aquaponic gardener. That's really my space, that's my passion. I'm all about taking everyday people in their backyards, in their basements, and helping them to grow healthy food and you know, be, be self-sufficient, be closer to being self-sufficient. So my space is all around uh, uh, home food production. This right here is the system that my husband and I designed. We launched it in August of this year. It's called the Aquabundance System. It comes in four colors. Mm -hmm. It's a woman's touch to it. Um, it's, it's on uh, industrial pastures. The idea is that you can roll it outdoors to your deck to grow in the summer and then wheel it indoors for the winter. Um, so it's, it's seeing some nice traction, especially in the hydroponic world. I think in part that's because I've got a lot of connections in the hydroponic world and it's easy for me to do that. But the hydroponic world has actually been very open to aquaponics from my perspective. Uh, that's me and my dog Luna in my, uh, my greenhouse. I have a 12 by 20 foot greenhouse that we've done all of our R&D and all that work with. So, we don't want that. <coughs> Let me go this way. Okay. So everything that I do is, is what I call media-based aquaponics. Uh, it's the Australian model of aquaponics. It's about 12 inches of media, a flood and drain style system, and simple, simple, simple. So there's no, hey, there's no um, extra filtration. All the solids get washed up into the, the grow bed. I am a big fan of composting worms in the grow bed, um, and I'm not a big fan of extra supplementation. So we can talk about that at, at another time, but in a media-based system, which is very different than some of the other systems out there, for a home gardener, a media-based 
value system that's living in a world of just to keep it as simple as you can and make me successful, that's what I'm doing. And these are, are just some images of plants from this summer case. message that we're going to get out. So that's a lot of what I'm going to be reading into 